So yesterday, was it yesterday? Two days ago. I don't remember. It was yesterday. Yeah, Jimbo was yesterday. Texas A&M Day and SEC Media Days yesterday. And Jimbo, you know, when you talk as fast as he does, sometimes stuff is going to come out of your mouth that maybe really isn't supposed to come out of your mouth. Did he let us in on a little bit of a a little bit of a secret that nobody knew about? Orky, what's the story? So Jimbo Fisher, when asked about scheduling and all that stuff and the whole when Texas and Oklahoma joined the SEC, we've got to blow up the scheduling model and create a new one thing. One of the two finalists was the three plus six, where you have three permanent opponents and six rotating opponents. If you remember, the other one was a one plus seven model. Mm -hmm. Jimbo Fisher may have accidentally told everybody who his three permanent opponents would be if that is the selected model. And you've said many times you think that's the one that they're going to go with. Jimbo Fisher said that his three teams would be Mississippi State, LSU, and obviously Texas. Sorry, Ross Bjork. Sorry, not sorry. We are not sorry. Texas and Texas A&M, if they're in the same conference, need to play play each other every single year. So, yes, that is a foregone conclusion. The other two, LSU and Mississippi State. Do those three make the most sense for Texas A&M, first of all? No. It should be Arkansas instead of Mississippi State. Okay. That's how I would keep it. So you'd go Arkansas, Texas, and LSU as the three permanent opponents, uh, permanent opponents for Texas A&M. Without sitting down and like really thinking about everything, yes, off the top of my head, yes. Okay. What does that tell you if what Jimbo leaked is accurate? What does that tell you about? what Mississippi State's permanent three opponents will look like if you know that Texas A&M is one of them. And you know, too, because the Ole Miss is one of them. Right. So I wish I could remember all of what Ross had on his article from a a couple of months back or maybe a month back. I know that he had Kentucky still on the list for Mississippi State. And, I, you know, as much as those two teams have been playing each other since, you know. Moby Dick was a minnow. Yes, I mean, since the conference expanded and even further back than that. Um, I don't know, if, but I don't know if you keep Kentucky. I, I don't know if, are they going to want to try to do this sort of geog- geographically? I had to think about how you pronounce that word. Uh, for a second, you, you know, do you want to keep state with LSU or Auburn? I, I, don't, I don't know about that, but Kentucky would make a lot of sense just to keep a, uh, the old East rivalry that you've had. I think Texas A&M, Ole Miss, Alabama makes the most sense for Mississippi State, honestly. Just stop. Just stop it right now. (laughs) And honestly, it probably would make sense to play Texas A&M and a home-and-home with Alabama every year for Mississippi State. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. I I, I love where your head's at. Yeah, do you now. So, Ole Ole Miss the Chiefs, the Cowboys, and the – Ole Miss gets the Chiefs, the Cowboys, and the Bills. How about that? Speaking of the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, according to the people that rate players on Madden, the third best quarterback in the NFL. Yeah. Um, doesn't make any sense. But for Ole Miss, then who would it be? Because we know it's Mississippi State. You assume that it's LSU. You would just assume that. But then who's number I three? I would not assume that. I would not assume that. Because if you – all right, so in this scenario, they've got A&M, right? LSU. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they got got A&M. I think they keep LSU and Alabama playing each other. That's just the game of the year Mm. four years out of five, it feels like. Here's the problem with doing that. If you keep LSU-Alabama together, doesn't that mean that Alabama's three permanents are Auburn, Tennessee, and LSU? Hold on a second while I strain really hard to try to conjure up a tear for Alabama. They're Alabama. They're, they, are, they are better than everybody. It doesn't matter who they play. They're better than everybody. They can play LSU, and they can get the hell over it. 
it'll be all right. And, mm-hmm. and then for LSU, I don't know if you keep Florida or, or, or do, you, do you put them with Texas? LSU, Texas every year is quite tasty to think about. Yeah. But then they have Texas A&M already. No, I don't gonna know. You're going to get Texas, Texas A&M. You're going to get Texas OU. Yep. And then and Texas then, needs a third one. Arkansas? I mean, Arkansas historically would make the most sense. See, if I were Makes if I were doing sense. the Ole Miss setup, I'd go Mississippi State, LSU, and Arkansas. I think the Ole Miss-Arkansas rivalry is underrated. Like, I think there's a little bit more there. It's than always people. nuts. Yeah, I mean, it's been a I good do want to keep that game because it's the best game. It's the wackiest game of the year. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Ole Miss is going to end up keeping Vanderbilt. Somebody has to get Vanderbilt. That, that, you know, Ross Dellinger, when he brought this up too. the first time, said Ole Miss might – be the lucky ones here and, and get Vanderbilt every year. They should just draw Vanderbilt out of a hat. It should just be like completely random. Or or take bids. <laughs> Who would make the biggest bid to take to a smaller revenue share to get Vanderbilt on their schedule every year? Bid the amount less that you will take. I don't hate I don't hate that amount. I don't hate it. Um and, and maybe that's it. I mean, so if, if Ole Miss gets Mississippi State and Vanderbilt, I mean, the league has to then put Alabama or Georgia as their third team, right? I mean, it, it, and that's not a knock at Mississippi State, but that's two teams that, if you're looking at one through 16, are going to be in the bottom eight. You got to take somebody from close to the top, right? You would think? Yeah. I mean, if you're Ole Miss, you sign up like you run to the front of the line to sign up for some combination of Vanderbilt, Mississippi State, and anybody else, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely you do. I mean, it it almost doesn't matter who the third one is at that point, as long as it's not Alabama or Georgia, I guess. What what if it was was Vandy State and Texas? Florida. You take it. You know what I would love? They would never do it, obviously, but would be great. Take a page out of the NBA's playbook and do a schedule lottery and televise it on primetime. The middle of April or something. Give yourselves well, time to work out the logistics. The, uh, and they could ping do pong that ball with, your uh, schedule. Yeah, not the not permanent ones. You've got your three permanent, and your other six games are going to be decided on the ping pong ball machine. Shout out, pardon my take. Who represents uh, State and Ole Miss? Can State get Dak up there? So the yeah, podium. you send former players or something to sit there and give their reactions. Or super the... fans or something, yeah. Yeah, I'm in. We just gave the SEC a million-dollar idea. We just did it. Yeah. Call up Bush's Beans or whoever became the official bean provider of the SEC and get them to slap their name on that. I'm not Jeff and Oxford Flake wouldn't be all over it. Jeff and Oxford says if Holmes got Vanderbilt permanently, then Clark Lee's prophecy about Vandy would no doubt come true. What about Vandy being <laughs> the best team in the country? <laughs> yeah. Somebody says Ole Miss is in the bottom eight, so I don't think it matters. Granted, they're potentially getting better, but if history proves true. Oh, yeah. I mean, if if you split the league in half the way Ross Dellinger talked about in that story several months ago, the, the, the logic behind it was you take the top eight teams in the league and the bottom eight teams in the league, and the top eight teams play two teams that are also in the top eight and one from the bottom eight, and the bottom eight teams play two teams from the bottom eight and one from the top eight and you get some sort of balance in the overall schedule that way. I mean, that's a scenario where it pays off to be number nine and not to be number eight. So. Sounds like they've already worked that out. There have been a bunch of models that have been worked through. I mean, they've got all kinds of scheduling models that they have gone through that, I mean, they could roll out tomorrow if they had to. Obviously, they don't have to, but they could. They're, they're that ready.